kick it off in the West yep. with preseason ranked North Texas. Now the Mean Green won seven of their last eight home games and finished off the season winning the Heart of Dallas Bowl. A lot of good things coming through with this program. Well, the one thing that stands out, which you just said, <laughs> is the fact they protect their home field, Apogee Stadium up in Denton, Texas. But all of this, the record, everything, it starts with their head coach, Dan McCartney. He did a great job when he was at Iowa State. He has now built North Texas program where they do go to a bowl. The expectations are high. And one of the things that makes Dan McCartney so good, nothing gets by him. Look at the fact special teams led the NCAA in block punts and block kicks last year. Then you go on the offensive side of the football. This team was in the top 10, a fewest sacks allowed. They don't make mistakes. First game is against Texas. It's going to tell us a lot, but I don't think this North Texas team is going to be intimidated at all. Dan McCarty's probably going to play on the fact, hey guys, guess what? Texas didn't recruit you. You got a chance to prove something. I like North Texas this year. Now, as we talked previously, there isn't a favorite right. in the West. A lot of really good teams shining through, which leads us to that number two spot, defending conference champions Rice. Now, what are the keys for David Bailiff and the Owls to repeat? Well, let's talk about David Bailiff first. He has changed the culture at Rice. The expectations are high. David Bailiff told me back in July, he said, this is a courageous bunch. They don't want to duplicate what they did last year. They want to increase on it. I think that is great coaching strategy. Don't discount them. Now, here's the thing they've got to worry about this season. They're going to pick up the pace on offense. They have a new quarterback in Dreyfus Jackson. How is that going to work? And also the fact that they have seven road games this year. Four of their first five are away from Houston, Texas. They've got to pick up a couple of wins in that in order to get a little momentum for the conference season. Now, Ron, this next team is used to being the underdogs, but don't take UTSA lightly. In a year, they went from being picked last in the West to nearly winning it all. What are the keys for them to take that next step? Well, they, they've got to go to a bowl game, obviously. Last year they were they were close to it, but they weren't allowed to go unless a bunch of magical formulas were involved. However, Larry Coker this year, they've got a legitimate chance to finish and go to a bowl game. Here, here's what just stood out to me. When I was breaking down some of the numbers for the Roadrunners last season, how about this one? No holding penalties for their offensive line the entire season. That is absolutely unheard of in my book. But you look at the fact that they've got a new quarterback in Tucker Carter. How is he going to react to being on the stage and being the man? The good news is he's got great protection, outstanding offensive line. UTSA is going to go to a bowl this year. Mark my words. Louisiana Tech's Skip Holtz had to replace a lot of players in his first season a year ago. How much better do you think the Bulldogs will be with that added year of experience going into his second season? A lot better because they made some great additions. First of all, on offense, Sterling Griffin getting that extra year, that's really going to help as far as the wide receiver position. Now you combine him with Paul Turner, who is a potent offensive threat. He can go deep. Their wide receiver is going to be tough to, to cover. Now on defense, they bring in Manny Diaz as defensive coordinator. He did a great job at the University of Texas. He's got seven starters back. He's going to put these guys in position and do it quickly where they're going to be successful. Now, the quarterback situation up until this week was unclear. They gave the starting quarterback position to Cody Sokol. He is a transfer from Iowa. Ryan Higgins will back him up. But I think Cody Sokol's got the size, he's got the arm, he's got the experience. I think a major improvement this year for Louisiana Tech. Again, another very young team with their coach in its second season is Southern Miss. How much can Todd Munkin's young group grow this season? Wow, I, I tell you what, they're going to have to grow, and they have to grow quickly. I mean, look at the end of last year. When you go down and look at who was starting at the end of the season, 14 of their 22 starters at the end of the year were either freshmen or sophomores. That's a young team. Combine that with injuries they had last season, it was a tough year. But there was a bright spot. Quarterback Nick Mullins, he took over in October, ended up throwing 13 touchdown passes. He is definitely a bright spot, but they've got to hold on to the football this season. They were minus 19 in turnovers last year. That's got to change, but I think with the experience it will. The Miners had their growing pains in Sean Coogler's mm -hmm. first season last year. Now, how do you see UTEP developing this fall? I think they're going to develop a lot because, like Southern Miss, when Sean took over, he had a youth movement last season for good reason. He wanted players that fits his system. Now, they took their lumps last year, that and a couple of injuries. It really hurt, but this year they're going to be better. Jeffrey and Jones, the two running backs, outstanding. But the key on offense, Jamel Showers, he got injured in about the seventh game of last season, hurt his shoulder. He is 100% healthy. He is a dual threat, and that's going to help their offense a lot this season. 